なんとバイロマーフィーとフィニアスとファーブがこの夏出会うディズニーチャンネル Big news today, guys, is we got the first trailer for the Phineas and Ferb Milo Murphy's Law crossover coming this August to Disney Channel America, but it's probably going to be coming even sooner to Disney Channel Japan. Just yesterday, the season one finale of Milo Murphy's Law entitled Fungus Among Us came out in Japan. Even though we've had this episode since last September, they just got it, and with it, they played this crossover trailer. So today, I'm going to be breaking down everything that we see here. If you don't want any spoilers for the crossover or any predictions, then please leave this video now because I'm about to dive in, and here we go. So the first shot we get, Dioji and Perry, it looks like with the floor do from Schmerz's Lair, but they could be anywhere. I have no clue. And the next shot is it fades from black. In one frame, we get to see this. Zack, Baljeet, Buford, Candace, and Melissa all together being attacked by pistachios. And if I increase the exposure, you can see it even better. Just like that. We also see in the background this robot jumping off the fence, which is apparently in this dark alleyway, and it's about to attack them. Now, keep this robot in mind because we see it later in the trailer. Also, notice how the skies are gray and cloudy, contributing to the mood of doom and demise. We kind of saw this in Milo Murphy's Law Fungus Among Us, where the skies were rather gray. But also, that does not look like the sun. Maybe it's just a clouded sun? That is extremely blue to be the sun. I'm not sure if something's going on there. Maybe I'm digging too deep, or maybe it's just artistic, but that does not look like the sun. Once again, we have Milo and Agent P flying together. Perry's using a grappling hook and also his rocket, which is kind of interesting. Maybe his rocket is broken, and he's now using the grappling hook to transport them elsewhere. So once again, it is confirmed Milo does learn Perry's secret identity, but we don't know how this is going to work because we do see Milo with Phineas and Ferb as well. Moving on, we have this shot, which is Perry, Milo, and Yoji, which could possibly be connected to the picture from this tweet that Dan Pavelmeyer shared a while back. So obviously, Perry, Milo, and Dioji are going to team up for some sort of an adventure or escape or something before Milo meets Phineas and Ferb, it would seem. So at the start of this shot, it looks like Danville is absolutely in ruins. Buildings are torn down everywhere. There's no clue as to what exactly is going to be exploding in the hole that we see. Either way, this is the biggest team-up shot of the promos. It features almost every character on the kid's side, except for Isabella and potentially Jeremy, who we're not sure if he's going to be in the crossover. This means that obviously Melissa and Zack escape from their pistachio prison that we saw them in in Fungus Among Us, and end up teaming up with Milo and Phineas and the gang. But it's interesting how Agent P isn't in the shot as well, and where Isabella is, because it seems like she would be a major part of the crossover, given how she's generally a part of the gang when they team up. Also, I think it's really funny how Dioji is just hiding behind Milo. Like, clearly he's afraid of the explosion, even though in the past he's done far more courageous things. I just think that's an interesting little touch. Here we have another shot of the Milo Agent P team up, which is something that we already knew about. It looks like Milo could actually be telling Perry what to do. Maybe Perry's asking Milo for advice. Maybe Milo is just telling Perry where to go if it's somewhere in his neighborhood. Not entirely sure, but it's interesting to see them here. Now we have a robot that Phineas and Ferber and they look a little intense. I'm not entirely sure what this robot is, but whatever it is, it's connected to the next one because both of them have this diamond patterning on the inside. So maybe Milo and Phineas and Ferber having a robot fight. Milo's appears to be filled with some sort of liquid gel. I'm entirely clueless as to what this could be but it's interesting to see that robots will play a major part. However, these are not the robot that we saw in the shot earlier. These appear to be different. In fact, the one that Phineas and Ferber in looks to be almost colored like Milo, with the same sweater vest color of his shirt, as well as like a yellow and black caution tape part. So I'm curious to see, maybe they're using giant robots to fight pistachions, or this could be pistachion Phineas and Ferb. I'm not sure. Here we have Milo running towards something and then clearly stopping because he's startled at whatever it is. Again, this is we're not shown, although the way it's cut, it's as if he's scared of the robot that we'll see in the next shot. And this is Phineas and Ferb in the flymobile that we saw in the beginning. And he looks upset and angry, which is extremely out of character for Phineas. I honestly think this is Pistachion, Phineas and Ferb that have been taken over. So somehow Phineas and Ferb escaped from the prison, perhaps with Melissa and Zack and then went to find Milo, meeting up with Milo and Dioji after Agent P maybe dropped them off back at their house. I believe we'll have a couple plots going. You'll obviously have the Doofenshmirtz, Cavendish Dakota, and Dr. Zone plot, even though none of them are featured in the trailer. Then you'll have the Agent P and Milo and Dioji plot, which will meet up with the Phineas, Ferb, Melissa, Zach, etc. With Buford and Baljeet as well, escaping from the prison, trying to get back to their house. Isabella, at this point, I think she would be doing something with the Fireside Girls. Similar to how in Night of the Living Pharmacist, she was the only one who managed to, you know, survive the whole thing in order to get back to the house. But either way, we have no idea about what Isabella's actually doing in the crossover so far. 
Now, this shot is interesting for a couple of reasons. Number one, because they're not actually in Phineas and Ferb's backyard. Phineas and Ferb appear to be steadying Milo, which makes me think they're trying to figure out Murphy's Law, which is something I figured they would be obsessed with anyways, because they've already had encounters with bad luck in the episode Just Our Luck. But one of the fan theories that I've heard is that Phineas and Ferb are going to try and harness Milo's bad luck, aka Murphy's Law, and use it on the pistachions so that they blast the pistachions with the bad luck ray, similar to what Doofenshmirtz made in Just Our Luck, and the pistachions' luck goes bad, which allows them to defeat them a lot easier. It's interesting to note that in most of the shots in this trailer that we see of Danville, Danville is totally shut down, like, the pistachions have just trashed the city. This is clearly not the future, this is current time Danville. So how would Danville rebuild unless there's a timeline reset? It makes me think there's no way we're going to get through this and the consequences of the pistachion attack are long lasting. There has to be a timeline reset somewhere which will undo Milo knowing Perry's identity among other things. I think that's going to be a key part of the end of the crossover. Also going back to the point that it's not actually Phineas and Ferb's backyard, it appears that they've rebuilt a set of their backyard, maybe to test what would happen in that sort of situation. You can see the paint cans in the background, and they're in some big warehouse of sorts. Perhaps they're hiding out from the pistachions when they're trying to figure out how to defeat them. Also, this goes back to something I said a while back about how the Phineas and Ferb classic backyard tree was replaced with a pine tree in the Alka Files. So far, we've seen nothing that indicates that it wouldn't be possible for that to still be a pine tree. Maybe Phineas and Ferb are reminiscing about their entire summer so they make it the regular tree when they paint the wall even though it's now a pine tree. I'll be curious to see how that bit of continuity plays into it because it'll really determine if the Alka Files episode is canon. But nonetheless, back to the crossover. Now this image is clearly photoshopped but it shows once again that Phineas and Ferb have made a set of their backyard for whatever reason in the warehouse except this time we get a bigger look and it appears to be the warehouse from the Note episode early in Milo Murphy's Lost Season 1 since you see all the different shoots and things that come off the main conveyor belts. Phineas and Ferb shaking hands with Milo, well that's probably just a promotional image. And then the last shot we get is just the Disney Channel logo inside Doof's penthouse. I mean, that was something I thought we would see anyways, but Doof's penthouse is going to probably be a location feature in the crossover. So that concludes the trailer analysis. Again, this was just really short, 17 seconds. You guys are probably wondering what the actual trailer says. From what I've heard, it's just not important. It's just like, how is this going to happen? How are they going to meet? and then it airs summer in Japan. We don't know if it'll air before us in Japan, although it's possible since they do have a trailer and we don't. I am extremely excited for this crossover. I can't believe we actually got something this early. I wasn't expecting anything until Comic-Con, which is probably when they'll release the first clip from it, much like they released a clip of Missing Milo last year. But just to recap, we don't know anything about Orton, Cavendish, Dakota, Doofenshmirtz, and Isabella in the crossover, so all of their plots are completely unknown. But this does give us a better idea of how Phineas and Ferb are going to work into the whole thing. They're probably going to meet Melissa and Zack in the prison, escape, and then go back home where Melissa and Zack are going to say, we need you to help us find Milo. I think at the very beginning of the episode, the Pistachions are going to attack Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated, which will separate Milo and Perry and Dioji from Orton and Cavendish, Dakota, and Doofenshmirtz. Either that or Cavendish, Dakota, Orton, and Doofenshmirtz all go on a time travel mission to try and fix things in the past, while Milo and friends fix things in the present as they meet up with Phineas and Ferb, and obviously Agent P wouldn't trust Doofenshmirtz to fix it anyway, so he just kind of lets him go his own way with Cavendish and Dakota. I'll probably make more predictions as we get more trailers for the crossover, but as of right now, that's everything we know about this new teaser. One last thing to keep in mind, Disney has been known to put in false footage to mislead us in these trailers, as with the Fungus Among Us promo shown here. Wait, the dog's name is D.O.G.? Wait, you're not the pizza delivery! So, don't take anything here as permanent. They could have removed Isabella from some scenes or whatnot, just not to spoil it for us. Let me know if you have any theories based off of the footage here in the comments below. And I'll see you next time on Phineas Flynn's Law.